In this video, we explore the real-world terrain import that was added in Vue R4. In this new release, we improved the feature with a few new options such as the ability to load satellite maps for texturing the terrain automatically. With the real-world terrain feature, we can import height field data from, well, the real world as a terrain into Vue. It's like DEMs or other types of elevation data. So let's add a real-world terrain to the scene by using the terrain button with the globe icon. On the right, we see a world map. We can zoom into the map and pan around and look for areas of interest. We can also enter specific coordinates to jump to a landmark. So if you would like to import a part of the Grand Canyon, for example, just Google the coordinates and enter them in here. Coordinates usually come in different formats, so by using the drop-down menu and the radio buttons, you can switch to the card format system for whatever you googled. When we zoom more and more into the map, Vue progressively loads more and more satellite data as tiles from different publicly available servers such as USGS. Here in the display group, we can not only view different satellite images of the world, but also select which server to use for loading the data for texturing the terrain with satellite images. Because not all servers have data from all over the world, it's useful to have more than one data source. Vue will inform you with a message if there is no data available for the coordinates you are currently exploring, or if you zoomed in so much that this level of detail is not sufficiently covered. The dialog remembers the last used area of import, so by clicking Fit View to Import Area, the map jumps directly to the coordinates entered up here. In the Resolutions group, we can now set the import resolution. In the Automatic mode, Vue tries to import data with a resolution between 2K and 4K based on the current zoom level and the size of the selected area in the world map. However, you can also manually force Vue to always import the terrain at a given resolution. If the available data has not enough resolution, it will be upscaled during the import to match the resolution you choose here. With the custom modes, you can select non-square areas to import or alternatively other square resolutions which are not included in the drop-down menu. You can also drag the rectangle around and rescale it or even rotate it. Optionally, you can also select the entire visible map area for importing. When we check Texture with Displaced Layer, Vue will not only import the height field data, but also the satellite image data as a texture. It will import whatever data source you have chosen here in the drop-down menu, so make sure to choose the right data source before starting the terrain import. You can import the terrain data either as a height field or as a procedural terrain. Personally, I go mostly with procedural because it allows to mix the imported data with fractal detail more easily. But in the end, it's just personal preference or it depends on the scene which option is better. For texturing, the Sentinel-2 cloudless imagery is the most reliable source for the set maps, so let's select this one and let's click Import. Now Vue will start to fetch the tiles from the server in the highest resolution available. This can take a few moments depending on the size of the area to import. So Vue has finished the import and we now have a real world terrain in the world browser which has been named accordingly to its coordinates. Now there are a few things to keep in mind with real world terrains. First, uh, you see that the imported terrain is rather flat. This happens because everything we import is an extract of a much larger area. So if we were to import hundreds of kilometers, we would receive a huge height map with a full contrast range from pure black to pure white. But if we extract only a portion of a much bigger environment, the resulting height map does of course not have that full contrast of the entire area with hundreds of kilometers. So to fix this, you could either export the height map from the terrain editor to Photoshop and increase the contrast, or, which is much easier, you simply resize the terrain along the vertical axis until it looks good. Second, as explained before, 
both the texture and the height map resolution will vary from place to place as both depend on the data available by the satellite imagery providers. So while a real world terrain might not hold up in close-ups, it's still great for aerial shots or specific visualization projects where you need the base geometry of a specific area of the world. Also, it's worth noting that the textures might include shadows from when the satellite image was taken. So to integrate such a texture terrain with shadows seamlessly into your atmosphere, you should try to match the sun's position to the shadows in the texture. Of course, you can also use the imported terrain as a starting point and add infinite fractal detail to the terrain, which we will cover in a future video. And of course, a real world terrain can simply serve as a base geometry for some ecosystems, some clouds and a nice atmosphere. So we hope you found this video on real world terrain import useful and you'll enjoy exploring the world from a whole new perspective. We'll see you in the next tutorial.